Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Yarmish from the Technical University of Denmark. I've been using the GNPS platform for about five years now, and the accessibility of GNPS dashboard really changes the game in terms of easily and quickly visualizing your data. I'm going to show you a few examples of some of the most basic workflows we as natural products chemists would do in typical vendor software like Excalibur, and in order to showcase the utility dashboard provides. So let's first start from a public data set deposited from my study on Streptomyces sideriformes and their interactions with fungi. Here is the paper. It is open access, so anyone can view it. And in this study, I've generated a table of annotated metabolites, as you can see. And really, this is important because at the start of any study, dereplication is an essential step to avoid re-isolation of known metabolites, but also to understand what's present in your sample. We've all done this via vendor software, but it's also important GNPS da dashboard can facilitate this, as well as lead into further tools on the GNPS platform. So let's take desferoxamine D1 as our example. We see here um, I have an exact mass, 603.3714. And of course, we can match this to the PubChem record that's available, desferoxamine D1. And we have a structure. So taking desferoxamine D as our dereplication example, we come into the GNPS dashboard, and we've placed it into our extracted ion chromatogram settings. So of course, the mass to charge ratio, so the, the ion that we see in the potentially in the mass spec. And when we enter this in, we can come down to our extracted ion chromatogram plot. And if we zoom, Let me pan back out. If we zoom in on this peak, we hopefully should see the three things we want. So here on the right, you can see represented are three samples from this study. So ED104 represents a Streptomyces monoculture. ED25 represents a co-culture with Aspergillus niger. And ED37 represents co-culture with Botrytis cinerea. All three are common, all two are common plant phytopathogens. And so uh, desferoxamine D1 is kind of your standard basic uh, streptomyces sideriform. Sideriforms are a class of compounds that chelate iron, and so they're important for the organism to gain ecological niche. And so in all three conditions, we see production of the compound. Now, qualitatively, we can see that potentially we have more desferoxamine D1 in the co-culture samples, but of course, uh, this just being mass spectral data, we have to be careful with this assumption because we're actually looking at ion counts, not concentration in any possible way. But this is exactly what we want to see. We can quickly dereplicate this compound and say, yes, it's here, this is where it is, and it's on all three samples. So this is super useful for us um, as natural products chemists to start deducing. So. Um, this really shows one of the most basic workflows for all of us, and it can be applied to any metabolite from a data set or from literature. Now, furthermore, in microbial natural products, evaluation of culture conditions is vital to gain a better understanding of metabolite elicitation, especially when focusing on drug discovery. So the study already mentioned and the previous work done by Matt Traxler, they observed the presence of these long-chain acyl desferoxamines they're also sideriforce, but uh, in their study, they saw them exclusively under co-culture conditions. So we can also try to evaluate this through the GNPS dashboard. So what I've done here is I have um, placed three acyl desferoxamine masses. Um, and again, we can find these back on the table if we would like to. So we have uh, these acyl desferoxamines, these three, one, two, three. I've essentially just taken these into here and separated them by a semicolon. And so we're essentially observing the presence or absence, again, in our uh, monoculture versus co-culture conditions. 
And when we come down and we have now created a extracted iron chromatogram plot, but we've grouped it per file. So each plot is a different file. So again, we have the pre we have monoculture, co-culture with Aspergillus niger, co-culture with Botrytis cinerea. So uh, what we can very easily see is we can see the presence of these acyl dysroxamines, which again in Matt Traxler's study were shown to be produced under co-culture conditions. We can see them uh, all, so red, uh, blue, red, and green, all three compounds in the co-culture with Botrytis cinerea. We can see the presence of one of the acyl dysroxamines is blue peak um, in the co-culture with Aspergillus niger, and then we don't see them or we see very, very little in monoculture conditions, which is exactly what we might intend, we intended to see. This is the hypothesis maybe we are formulating, and this is what we see. And so, again, we can evaluate uh, co-culture conditions uh, using dashboard. And really the last thing I want to show is Beyond the evaluation of knowns, we can also easily visualize and allow for prioritization of, of extracts when hunting for unknowns. This is an essential process in natural products. And so during the study, uh, we detected the presence of an un, a previously undiscovered desferoxamine analog. So it's this node here, uh, and it was identified using MS2LDA. Uh, and this actually is a M plus 2H double-charged uh, metabolite. And uh, no metabolite this large has ever been shown to be a potential desferoxamine analog. So, of course, this is very interesting to us. So, immediately, if we want to evaluate the conditions in which it was produced, again, we do the same exact procedure as we have been doing. We have our three samples or three conditions. We plot with the extracted ion chromatogram our mass that we're interested in. And again, if we just zoom in on our peak, uh, we can very clearly see that in co culture, in, it is only produced in co culture conditions and is potentially produced uh, significantly greater in the co culture with uh, Botrytis cinerea. So uh, currently, for future studies, we are basically um, running these conditions. Uh, to try to isolate this compound. And using a tool like GNPS dashboard allows us to very quickly uh, visualize this. So all three examples I've shown are common day-to-day -day practices for natural products researchers, and hopefully these examples have shown the utility of GNPS dashboard to carry out such tasks.